Week 21, day five. I, I told you yesterday that this is such a, um, the Changing Lives Ministry is a team. And, and we have, uh, uh, right now we have David and Laura Everett, Dan uh, Alexander, my wife Mary, and, uh, and we're gaining members as we go on the Changing Lives Ministry team. And, and I feel bad for them because I'm the only one that ever get any email. <laughs> uh, you can email me at uh, changing lives, uh, coaching to change lives at gmail.com, coaching to change lives at gmail.com. You can call me at 580-212-7752 and be glad to talk to you. But I get all these emails about this mother that meets with her children at night over the dinner table and goes through the lesson. Uh, a, a lady that's, that works in an office and she makes everyone in the office watch it. And she said, <laughs> she got an email the other day from one that she called kind of a, had been a negative person and said she, she has begun writing at the end of every email, make it a great day. You know, when you get those, it makes you feel like a million dollars because you know that you're making a difference in somebody's life. <clears throat> we talked about Jackie Robinson the other day in, in the lesson on tolerance. And I told you he was one of the 300 great leaders. Jackie Robinson was quoted in one of his speeches, and he said that if you don't make an impact on somebody else's life, you've wasted your life. Whoa, wait a minute now. What did he say? If you don't make an impact on somebody else's life with your life, you've wasted yours. So you're, you're not in it for you. You're in it for the other people. You're in it to help someone. That's what it's all about. Make an impact on somebody else. Be friendly. What do we talk about all week? Be friendly. Smile, call them by their first name, learn their first names. It makes all the difference in the world. Be friendly. Every time I took a, a coaching job, the first group <laughs> that I went to visit at the school, not the school board, not the booster club, not the administration, not the teachers, not even the players, I went and met with the cafeteria workers. You see, my mom worked in the school cafeteria once she got us into school. She stayed home with all six of us until she got us into school. Then she got a job in a school cafeteria. And the players could get away with doing almost anything with me except being rude or obnoxious to a cafeteria worker. Cause I guess I always saw it as my mom. And so our players were friendlier <laughs> to the cafeteria people than probably any group of football players that ever lived. And I'm gonna tell you something, we reaped the greatest benefits from doing that. And I'm just gonna give you a real short one. Our kids were so good to our cafeteria workers. In Idabel, Oklahoma, the lady in charge of the cafeteria was a lady named Carolyn Jans. And I went that first day and I met her and I met all the workers and told them that any time one of our players was not respectful to them, if they would let me know, <clears throat> I would visit with the player and his parents. And, and we would get that straightened out. Carolyn Jans, in the four years that I coached football at Idabel, Oklahoma, at the end of every practice, did you hear that? At the end of every single practice, she gave every player a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a deal of chocolate milk. Ask your strength coach what the best thing for any person is. When you go out there and work out, you're going to destroy 10,000 cells in your body. What's the best way to recover? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a glass of chocolate milk. For four years at the end of 
every single practice. Did we, did, were we friendly to them in order for that to happen? No. That came about as a natural thing. You're talking about eyes. You're talking about Jeff, Thomas Jefferson's eyes. Would the person have stopped and asked you, if you were riding on that horse, and I think that's a much more important question than, than maybe you think it is. If you were riding on that horse, would somebody ask you for a ride? Could they look in your eyes and see that you were a good person and see a smile on your face and know that you are good? That is such a, you have to develop that quality of being friendly. And you take all these others, you take purpose-driven and commitment and honesty and all these, and you think, well, friendliness is not that important. I'm promising you. I'm not sure that it's not the one at the top of the list because if it's friendly, it says everything about you that somebody needs to say. Let them look into your eyes and make sure what they see is a positive, friendly, caring, compassionate person. Look at it this week. For every day this week that you were friendly, put a plus. And if you had a tough day and you weren't friendly, you didn't fake it till you made it. See, you got to fake sometimes being friendly. I, I guarantee you, I, you, I do. I did. You have to fake it. But after you fake it for a little while, you get it right. It becomes a habit. I'm going to call you by your first name. I'm going to speak to you. I'm not going to say anything demeaning to you. I'm going to be friendly. Give yourself a plus. If you didn't get a plus and you got a minus, why? What are you going to do differently next week? On these, what did you learn this week from those stories that we talked about? The Thomas Jefferson story. The integration story, where friendliness was not based on race or religion. They, it became based on friendly people, class people. The students, if they came to you and they said, what were the students like at Idabel? Or the students like at your school, what would you say? Oh, they're great. Unbelievable. And that's why you've got to look at it. You've got to see them that way. Which for what are you going to feed? The good or the evil? Because whichever one you feed is the one that's going to show up every day. Your goals this week. Cell phone. Cell phone. Chill. <laughs> or did you have some goals? Did you accomplish those goals? Did you get your goals, put them in there? If you didn't accomplish them, if you got two of them done, right, why you didn't get that third one done and what you're going to do differently. We're going to become purpose-driven. I can guarantee you that. We're going to be we're going to be purpose driven. We're going to be committed, and you are going to be the best you that you could possibly be. Developingcharacter.org, coaching to change lives at gmail.com, 580-212-7752. and I will see you Monday. <laughs>